Hi, this is Mary Wharton, and you're on the Stage Door Show with Tom and Dave. The Stage Door Show. Celebrating the independent artist. With Dave Hondell and Tom Klein. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Stage Door Show tonight. This is Dave Hondell. I've got my co-host down in Florida, Tom Klein. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing good. Good to be here. Tonight, we, we're, we're so honored to have our guest, uh, multi-award uh, winning uh, filmmaker, producer, director, Mary Wharton. Mary, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, you know, Mary, your recent documentary, Jimmy Carter, Rock and Roll President, you know, swept a lot of awards at some of the film uh, festivals recently, and it's critically acclaimed, you know, it was on CNN, which I, I couldn't wait for, and I, I watched it when it, when it aired. Um, but, you know, you got to really do this with your father, which is great, the, the famous blues musician, Bill Wharton. And, you know, as a, I have a daughter myself who's, who's doing the same thing I am. So as a father, you know, I'm very proud of that. So how was it for you to be able to work with your father on such a big project like that? It was really, really great. And, um, you know, it was a funny thing. Uh, I've never worked with my dad uh, like this before. I've certainly licensed his music um, for uh, shows that I've done in the past, but on a pretty limited scale. Um, and uh, we, we actually had kind of uh, a, another composer that we were talking to in the beginning of the project, and it didn't work out for various reasons, scheduling mostly. Um, but it was a pretty well-known um, composer and, uh, you know, we were super excited to, to have this person on board and then it fell apart and I, I was in a little bit of, a, uh, you know, I, don't, I, I was about to, to, to use the S word, but it was, it was a little bit of like, oh no, what are we going to do kind of moment. And um, I asked my dad to send me some of his music that was pre-existing. I was just like, anything that you have, instrumental versions of your songs, send me some, some tracks so that we can just try to start using them. And, and we also had another composer who recorded some stuff on spec for us. And, and you know, we were auditioning a lot of different music um, for the film. And one of the things that was really important was because of Jimmy Carter being from the South and because we were really trying to sort of upend people's notions about who Jimmy Carter is with this movie, I wanted to be careful that the music not be too, not play too much into people's preconceived expectations about him. Like if, if we had just hired a banjo player to play some, you know, Americana, country songs and that was the score it would have been like you know no big surprise right so my dad's music definitely skews towards the americana you know realm of things but he um also has a, a pretty wide variety of styles that he's you know dabbled around in over the years and um so we started placing his tracks and they were just magnificent they were actually just like the first pieces of music that we placed and then i started just kind of tiptoeing in and being like so if i sent you a scene like do you think you could write something for this particular scene and he was so excited to to tackle it's something he'd never done before um but he took on the challenge and just nailed it every time and it was such a joy to be able to work with him because not only was like he giving me music and I was giving him feedback and, you know, sometimes asking him to change things, but I didn't really have to ask him to change much because he really, he really got it, you know, really quickly. But also because I was showing him rough cuts, he was giving me feedback on the storytelling in the film that was so valuable because, you know, when you're doing something, especially something like this, where, it was kind of a big secret, this film. We couldn't tell people about it because we were so worried that someone else was gonna 
scoop us and and get the story out before we could you know so we had to be super secretive about it and i couldn't show cuts to people or even tell people what i was working on half the time you know yeah real seek i mean um, that's kind of competitive correct i mean the the industry yeah i mean but also like we were worried that like you know CNN would bang out a quick piece about it and then it would be like the, the, the big surprise is out. Like that was one of the things that we had going for our film was people would be like, wait, Jimmy Carter, rock and roll, Bob Dylan, the Allman Brothers. What? Are you kidding? Like, huh? You know? <laughs> so we protected that, that secret. It wasn't really a secret. I always say it was sort of like a secret that was hiding in plain sight. Because as soon as we started looking into it, we found all kinds of stuff. But um, in the beginning, I didn't know anything about it. And I was shocked to learn, you know, as much as, as we learned on this project. But um, oh, I'll say from a, I heard about it from a friend of your dad's <laughs> mm. before it actually came out. And I was kind of, I, was like, I didn't say anything to anybody, but I was like, wow, Jimmy Carter rock and roll president. I didn't expect that. But going to your dad and, and the growing up, like you're from a family of pepper people yeah. <laughs> um, and you went to Florida State which is kind of up there where your dad lived I'm assuming where you grew up yep and then you went to VH1 and your whole career your whole life story has been telling the story of all these iconic musicians uh, you've done so many documentaries and <clears throat> like at what point how did you t quickly as quickly as you can the story of how you got to where you're at and when you realized like doing this, these documentaries about music is what I'm going to be doing. I love this. Well, it definitely was always a passion for me. You know, I think I think there were moments in in my uh, youth when I harbored dreams of becoming a rock star, but apparently I don't have any musical talent, so that was you know <laughs> the end of that. Um, but I've always been obsessed with movies, and I've always wanted to be a storyteller in some way. I thought about being a writer, whatever. Um, but um, yeah, I guess it in in some ways it was just it was just sort of like it seemed like the best thing to do and and it's not a it's not a particularly great uh, career path. I wouldn't advise it to people in terms of um, you know if you want to get rich and famous, uh, especially if you want to get you know famous quickly. It's that you know I've I've been doing this for 25 years. You know I'm still not famous and I'm definitely not rich you know so you know but but it's something that i was kind of driven to it's sort of like you know the universe works in mysterious ways and it feels like every decision that i ever made has led me to this place where you know i have i'm lucky enough to have the privilege of being a storyteller that's able to reach a broad audience every now and then, you know? Um, well, I heard a story, Mary, no, you're talking about no, no musical talent, but I did hear a story and I read it where your father was performing on stage with the band and you and your sister were toddlers, I believe at the time, but wandered on stage and started playing the piano. And he said it was the greatest moment of his, uh, of his career. So talk about yeah. that a little bit. I don't even remember that. That's one of those family stories that, ha you know, I was yeah. too young. I do remember that um, I loved when, when I was a kid, you know, my dad has always been a musician. He's never done anything else. And there would always be a bunch of his musician friends hanging around the house when I was a kid and tons of my dad has a bunch of guitars and I loved like, the inside of his guitar cases because they're always like velvety and like bright colors and and he had this in the 70s he had one of those ovation guitars with the big rounded backs and i could like get into that guitar case and like curl up i remember one time my sister locked me inside and i, I was really <laughs> mad about that <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, my dad's music collection was a huge influence on me. I loved listening to albums. I would get into trouble for, you know,
know, getting my fingerprints all over his records or scratching records. One time I dropped one and broke it, you know, clumsy kid hands. Um, and I loved just kind of hanging around, you know, I, like I said, like I love the, the way guitar cases, like the way they smell and, you know, all the instrument cases were something that were like fun. That was, you know, my, my playhouse as a kid. I could see though, uh, like I have claustrophobia. If somebody locked me in a guitar <laughs> case, I would go crazy. I would claw my way out. Um, it's, yeah, a little bit of a, like a coffin. <laughs> yeah. uh, but over the years, I mean, you have done like, I, I was stunned when you sent the bio. Uh, I'm going to read it real quick. Like, Joan <laughs> Maez, uh, LL Cool J, The Doors, David Bowie, U2, Linda Perry, Train, Pitbull, Enrique Iglesias, Jimi Hendrix, George Clinton, Elton John. I mean, it's the who's who. You, you were part of the Bruce Springsteen making of, uh, uh, which one? Making Born of to Run. Born to Run. Mm -hmm. um, of all of those, I mean, you've had access to talk to, and on Jimmy Carter, you had so many musicians of renown on there. Mm -hmm. um, was there ever a moment where you you found yourself face to face with somebody you idolized growing up and were, did, have you ever had that starstruck moment? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, well, I, talk about, you know, shaking hands with the president is... <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Yeah, but it's certainly, definitely been starstruck. I mean, you know, I I, uh, I try to to hide it <laughs> as best as possible, and I, you know, um, I for a long time I would never, you know, ask for autographs or selfies or or anything like that. So there are definitely some some um, people that I've had the pleasure and honor to work with that I'm I kick myself now like now that David Bowie is dead like why didn't I ask for a foot but you know also a lot of especially in the early days of my career when I first started making music documentaries and meeting a lot of rock stars when I was working at VH1 it was you know quite honestly in the days before um, smartphones and so there weren't there oftentimes there, there just weren't cameras around, you know, um, but, uh, but, you know, the, the interesting thing to me is that when you meet special people in, in, in the world and, and there are a, a lot of those people, you can tell immediately that they are famous for a reason. You know, it's not, it's not just that they, they got lucky, you know, I mean, one of the people that I was the most nervous to, well, I was pretty nervous the first time we shot with, with President Carter, I'm not going to lie, but um, the most nervous I think I've ever been in my life was was when we shot an interview with Aretha Franklin for my Sam Cooke film. And she is, uh, she, you know, was, I should say, she was a commanding presence, as you, you might imagine, mm -hmm. and not an especially warm and welcoming person either. Mm -hmm. um, like she barely would even look at me, you know? <laughs> And, and I was just like bowing down to the queen, like, you know, please don't eat me. <laughs> we're, we're, um, because, uh, yeah, but, but she, but she, you know, her, her face just lit up when she started talking about Sam Cooke and it, she became almost a different person when, when she went to that place to talk about, about him. And um, that was a, an amazing, amazing moment for me. Have you ever had, Mary, have you ever interviewed somebody that you were really looking forward to interviewing and without mentioning names, just really had a difficult time um, because you know, maybe you had an expectation of, of that person. And then when you sat down with them, it was, you completely changed your mind about that person after the interview. Have you ever had that situation? I've, I've definitely been disappointed by people um, in, 
and you know they they say oftentimes like you know you should never meet your idols <laughs> But I think with most of the musicians that I've met um, who are truly, truly talented, there, there's something about having that much, um, you know, sort of inner power that comes from being one of those special people in, in the world that they're, they're generally really amazing because they don't have anything to prove and and you know there there's there's been some people that you know i didn't necessarily idolize but i was like oh you know i've always liked this person or thought they were cool and then you meet them and they're like bitter and jaded sure, and sure. you know you're just like <laughs> Wow, really? Like, do, do you have to be mean to everyone? You know, <laughs> yeah. a little surprising, right? Yeah. I, I was going to ask too. Of all of the, because like I was reading on the list of you know everything you've done, uh, what was your favorite project? That what? And I'm guessing uh, and Jimmy Carter probably because that was so huge wow. historically. But uh, beyond that, or or if it was Jimmy Carter. Uh, it, what was the most rewarding where you're like, that was, I'll remember that for the rest of my life. There's a few, there's a few. Jimmy Carter is, is certainly ranks up there as, as being probably the most rewarding because it, it we were able to bring it out at a time when I think that America really needed to be reminded of what is good and great about our country. And, and I think, you know, if I could be so immodest as to say so, I think that the film does that. I think it reminds you about, you know, that there are people in in this country who do things for the right reasons and that we, you know, we truly are a, um, you know, uh, we've contributed so much to the culture of the world with our music and not just rock and roll, but American music, jazz, you know, it, it's, it's been a major, major contribution and music is such a powerful, powerful source of, of, you know, joy and happiness and, and enlightenment. You know, I think that music is the closest that we humans will ever get to touching the divine. And I, I think that that's, that's one of the things that I love the most about being able to tell stories about music is that it reminds people of that. And, um, and that's a special privilege. I, I will say also that another experience that I will always hold near and dear to my heart is the Sam Cooke film because um, not only is it just such an incredible story and he's such an incredible artist, legendary, you know, groundbreaking, iconic, like all of those things, um, you know, but obviously he died well before I was born. Um, but his family welcomed me into their family and that was an incredible experience to have and you know it I, I'll I'll just always love his brother Elsie Cook until the day that I die you know <laughs> he's like he's like my uncle Elsie you know <laughs> well, the film, um, Mary the film was amazing by the way uh, my wife and I saw the saw that film in your interview with Aretha and and the the Cook family. It was it was it was a really amazing piece of work. And you know, speaking of that, how how it's like a music brings people together. It really, I mean, in your work, you would you would see this, but it breaks down barriers too. I mean, it ra breaks down sure. racial barriers. And you know, we had a conversation the other night, my wife and I, about about watching watching one of your films about uh, the Jimmy Carter film because he was singing gospel at a gospel church and. You know, I, I, I did a lot of music videos for, for gospel musicians. So I, I was mm -hmm. in a lot of church, um, African-American churches. And, and just to see the, how music just brings everybody together, communities together is amazing of all races and, and ethnicities. It's just amazing. So I, I'm sure you see that a lot in your work. 
Absolutely. And, and, and it's, it's one of the things that, that makes me um, want to keep doing this. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's very challenging uh, work to, to, to say the least. Um, but it's rewarding because it, it, it brings joy to people and, and it starts conversations and, you know, it gets people maybe out of their heads or off their phones for a minute to engage with other humans. And, um, and that's something that, you know, is sort of sorely lacking, especially now uh, because of the pandemic. But, but even before that, you know, people have a tendency to, you know, get, get on their phones and not, not be, you know, present in the world. And um, yeah, but I, I do think that, that music has, has an incredible way of bringing people together. And, um, and it's, a, it's a very special thing. Your newest thing, because I was going to ask you, like, did you take some time after Jimmy Carter or did you dive right into another project? And Tom Petty is yeah. wrapping that up already. Oh my God. Yeah, it's, uh, this has been a really, really quick one. And I, I actually, I did take a little bit of time at, at when we finished uh, Carter because right when we finished and as we were about to premiere the film at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2020, uh, the pandemic hit. And so everything came to a stop, like all at once, you know, for, for the entire world. And, and I was, you know, sitting at home wondering, you know, what I was going to do, you know, and, and, you know, it was, it was tough for everyone, but it was, you know, it was like, I, I was, I was really not sure how it was going to work again. And then this kind of archival based documentary project uh, just kind of fell into my lap. And um, it was the, the most amazing thing because at a time when, you know, I was kind of a little bit lost. I didn't, you know, I, I lived in New York City and I, I left my home and, you know, I was, I was kind of jokingly calling myself a pandemic refugee, but I didn't know where I belonged, where I should be, you know, should I stay in the city because I want to support New York? I, I'm a New Yorker, but, you know, by now, um, or, or do I go away because it's not a safe place to be? And, you know, the, the very first wave of the pandemic hit New York really, really hard. And, you know, when you have like tractor trailer trucks being, you know, freezer trucks being turned into morgues outside of the hospitals, it's a pretty good sign that maybe, you know, it, it, you, you could do more good by getting out of the way, basically, you know? <laughs> and, um, and then this, this Tom Petty thing came, came along and I just was able to like bury myself in, in work with this, making this, this film. And it was like both the music being so, uplifting it's about tom's record wildflowers which is a beautiful beautiful record and and being able to just be creative and do what i do best um it really saved me through the pandemic like i would have gone crazy if i didn't have something creative to do um and so I'm super grateful on so many levels and really, really excited. We're uh, rushing to get it done now. We're doing the sound mix and the picture finishing, and it's going to premiere at South by Southwest in a couple of weeks. Oh, we can't wait for that, uh, Mary. Uh, you know, I always talk about this with my guests on the show, and, and I want to bring this up to you because I think somebody with your experience, all the years that you've done this, um, we talk about somebody's legacy, what they want to leave behind to their to the fans of their work. Uh, so, what what is the message you want to get give to your fans? Uh, what what do you want them to walk away with when it's all said and done? Well, you know, 
That's a tough question. <laughs> um, I think ultimately, um, I would just say that, you know, the, that, the, the reason that I've kind of focused my career on telling stories about music is because I, I firmly and with from the bottom of my heart believe that that music will bring us together, that music will, um, you know, help us get through the toughest times and that it's an essential part of, of being a human. Uh, you know, every, every culture in the world has found a way to make music often before we've found a way to make any other form of art you know, uh, and, and it supersedes language and, and it supersedes cultural barriers and, you know, race and everything else. And so, you know, I think that the important thing to remember is just that, you know, music will, will be there for you. And, um, and, you know, we should just never, never, uh, let go of that and i think we need to remember to like support our musicians uh as much as we can uh they need a lot of help right now a lot of them are struggling and um so i think that uh we need to realize as a as a society that you know art and culture and 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 creatives are what keep us alive and 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 so hopefully you know people will will keep supporting that that's well said and uh, we can't thank you enough mary for being on the show i know tom and i were super excited to have you uh, join us today and uh give us your insights and your work and uh, we're, we're both huge fans of your work and we can't wait thank to you see what's uh you know um we can't wait till the Pe tom petty one comes out because uh, you know obviously uh you know we're, we're we're excited to see the other ones as well so thank you again mary uh, for joining us i had one real quick question where where do people find a lot of you you know because you've got 20 or so documentaries where right uh, well, a lot of them are were for VH1, uh, and and they're not available anymore. A lot of them may have been like, uh, you know, the Joan Baez film was available on um, on DVD and on on Netflix at one time, but I'm not sure if the we typically only license material for a certain period of time, and maybe the licenses have run out, but. Um, so I think that's the case with the, the Sam Cooke film, although you can find DVDs of it. Um, you know, Jimmy Carter is available on uh, Amazon Prime and HBO Max and uh, iTunes, you know, wherever you typically rent video from. Um, and i um, trying to think of what else is, is out there that's really readily available. Um, you can find the Sam Cook DVDs every now and then on, uh, you know, different, different places. So it's, it's, uh, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> well, and I'll keep looking too. I, I do a lot of eBay. <laughs> <laughs> you might find some stuff there. Well, thank you again, Mary. And, and again, you know, good luck. Best of luck to you and, and uh, the film festival circuit with the, with the Tom Petty documentary. Can't wait to see it. And again, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me.